This is, this is, this is. I want to talk about your dog, which is why I kind of like jumped the gun and starting it because I was like, oh, dogs, everybody. <laughs> uh, we have a dog. We have a new dog that, well, she's not new anymore. She's two, but okay, time flies. I look forward to two. Uh, yeah. 12 weeks is tough. 12 weeks is tough. Oh, my God. <laughs> he get, he's got so much energy, and I don't have a big house, but we got a good backyard, so he just he'll run for like two hours and then just be still ready to party. <laughs> Never tired. Never tired. Never. He, he cries every time I have him take a nap, but I'm like, dude, I, I have a real kid, so I can I can deal with you too. It'll be all right. Yeah. You'll feel better in a little bit. <laughs> Do you have a yard for the dog? Oh, yeah. That was uh, the good thing about this house. I got a great backyard. It's been begging for a dog for a while. Nice. And I keep, uh, I keep parts of it like longer for pollinators because I really like birds and butterflies and stuff. Uh, so... He gets to just explore the jungle half the day, and I think he's living his best life. Way better than eating dead mice on the sidewalk, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> I, I wouldn't mind showing up on your doorstep if I was a, a lost puppy. Yeah, um, come, come on. Come on. I got food, man. <laughs> I, you got a little bit of steak last night? I'll, I'll feed you, dude. <laughs> yeah, let's go. That's yeah, the Okie in us. I love We're always it. ready to feed people. <laughs> I love Oklahoma. Yeah, Oklahoma, man. It's okay. It's all right. It's pretty good. People there are, are really like a, a good friend of mine, Trey. He's from Oklahoma, and and Brad, another one. Uh, just these guys are like salt of the earth, down home. Like will do anything, you know, shirt off their back to help people. Like and, and that's that's what strikes me about you guys too. You know, you have that same vibe. So we're definitely Okies. That's that's what we do. That's what we do well. We love on people and we love our puppies. <laughs> Hi, Bree. Hi. Hey, Bree. We're just talking about Charlie. The goodest boy. He's a good boy. The goodest boy. You know, it's funny about you named your dog Charlie. Is so so the dog showed up on your doorstep, stray. You took it in, um, but you named it Charlie, or was it? Did yeah. it have a tag or no? No, no tag, I named nothing. him Charlie after uh, all dogs go to heaven. Okay, all right. I I don't think I've seen that movie. I've I've heard of it a million times. I've never seen it. It will, it will ruin your day. It is an emotional <laughs> roller coaster. Don Bluth came for the jugular. And there's a scene at the end where the dog's talking to this little girl saying he's going to miss her, all this kind of stuff. You find out later that the little girl's dad, like, killed her, like, in real life before Burt Reynolds recorded that part. So he's literally, like, saying goodbye to this little girl. And once you know that, when you watch that scene, you're just like, bro. So if you ever want to get emotionally destroyed, all that is going to happen. <laughs> oh, my God. I was I mean, just the thought of the movie makes me sad. So, yeah, I mean, that's wild. And then you can watch Homeward Bound afterwards and really get those good feelings back, you know. Yeah, right. Yeah. That's the thing is, like, my wife won't watch movies with dogs if she knows the dog is going to die at the end. Like, I, I can't tell you. I, I know I've seen a bunch of these these movies, but, like, is it is it Maddie and me or something with the beat? Marley and Marley me. and me. Oh my God! Yeah, that's, that's a rough one. That's a rough one. That's a rough one. Nope. Nope. Yeah, no, what, no more. Yeah, of Airbud too, but they changed it. They originally, they put him down. He bit a ref, but they it didn't test well. So. Oh yeah, I bet. Fuck. He bit a ref. Uh, so do you ever whole do you, different movie? Have you ever like <laughs> watched like been in the van? I don't know where you got what what you're doing on tour. Maybe in the hotel room van backstage. Uh, watch something sad, too close to like the set or too close to like going out and talking to people and hanging. And you're just like, I'm not ready to be around people right now. I'm, like <laughs> destroy. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. That was uh, I... the haunting of Hill House on our tour last summer. I, I watched it, which is an emotionally devastating series. And I, I watched it right before one of the shows. And I just kind of sat there behind merch and was just staring off into space. People would be like, so hype. And I'd be like, yeah, yeah, life is good, man. Life is good. <laughs> oh man. You're staring off. Just like what just happened. Thousand yard stare. Uh, a lot of people say they stopped. A lot of people say me and my friends that I've been talking to me, me and me and Tom Chichilla both have stopped watching horror movies. And we're like, why is that? And we just don't have a crate. It's not that we don't like them or, or, you know, this, but the craving, it's like, I, I don't crave that. I crave other things, but I think it was because the world got so real for us 
you know, for a f- it still is all the time, right? But uh, it made horror movies a little too, I don't know, also too real. You know, when conspiracy theories keep coming true and you're just like, wait, are aliens are real now? Like, what, is Bigfoot next? Like, so probably, you know, people are out there going, yes, Bigfoot is real. Come on. What do you catch up? Of course. We actually <laughs> had friends who played a big Bigfoot, uh, like, like big meetup, uh, like a con, a convention. And they like as a Bigfoot band, like a band that only made songs about Bigfoot and made up all this, didn't have a single song before they got there and just made it up as they went. John from Michael Sarah Palin. And he did it just to mess with the people from the Bigfoot convention. So they just made up 30 minute set about Bigfoot live in front of this crowd of Bigfoot enthusiasts. I like the idea. I like it a lot. <laughs> Bigfoot truthers are, are some, some real, some real ass motherfuckers. <laughs> so that's uh Brianna. Brianna. We have Brianna and we have Joey on. Um, welcome back everybody. Welcome you guys were on, I think it was 419 was the last time you guys were on. So now we're at 524. Okay. So a little while ago. I didn't An look up the or two. I didn't look up the date, so I don't I don't know how long ago that was, but I think some things have changed in your world. They've changed in mine as well. But we're talking about you guys. So uh, I noticed you had a new EP out. It dropped um, in August. So uh, what else? I mean, I, I know, is is it the EP? Are you guys, what's ha- what's happening with that? So we actually, we have a full length coming out uh, September 20th. Okay, that's right. Yes, you told me that. Joey. And yeah, so our first, our first couple of singles that we dropped, we just wanted to get a few things out there as soon as possible. So we kind of started with a, a double single drop and it's just kind of been singles up to up till now but uh nothing else is coming out until the the rest of the album comes out at the end of september yeah spotify put all four of them together after we released the fourth single it was like here's an ep and we people were kept texting us they're like great ep and we're like it is a yeah it, it thank you thank you for one sure, but- <laughs> it's so weird is that the algorithm doing that for you guys like what is that it's something new I've never heard of like somebody just like, or not somebody, uh, the services, streaming services, making up a grouping of songs and calling it an EP. That's what's so weird about today. The, the business, the music business with streaming and there's all the rules are changing. Like, like as evidence right here, um, people don't call a proper album an album. They'll just call a group of songs an album. Like you'd be like, but that's not an album. That's B sides. That's demos. That's if it, that's a live album. But if it's on there, people just see it as an album. Are you? Are you guys see it as an album too, or are you? I'm a little more old school. Obviously, going into it at seeing the changes, but is that making? Is that that's probably why uh, yeah. Spotify just made an EP for you is because that's the new paradigm or whatever. I, I'm not sure. I, I know that, you know, dropping two singles at once and kind of going into an album cycle a little bit heavy is kind of maybe not a, as popular an option. But I think we just kind of fell victim to like the AI sort of sorting and distribution, you know, machine. And I think uh, we, we didn't we didn't fight it. I don't even know how we would change it. And that's it's kind of one of those funny things about you know, digital media with music and releasing it and those, the kind of nitty gritty things that, um, I, I don't know. So we, we certainly do not consider that an EP. Those are singles leading mm-hmm. towards <laughs> the release of our full length LP album in September. Yeah. Full disclosure. Honestly, when, when Joey texted me, he did say the album now that I'm thinking about it, but like in my mind, when I went and looked and I was listening to your music, I'm like, Oh wait, maybe he meant EP and maybe it's already out. And so in my head I was thinking, okay, EP. And that's where I was going. Um, it makes way more sense now because I was listening to the songs and going back through your singles and going, okay, so this is a single, here's a single. And then now it's on here, the EP. Uh, it makes way more sense now that those are singles leading up to this album. And and I think everybody will get that right away now that, you know, anybody listening to this conversation obviously will. But um, it's weird. Those things happen. And so realizing they happen will help in the future, I hope, 
you know, people kind of like understand, like, just because it's on here doesn't mean this is exactly what's being pushed or what's the latest thing. Right. It's like, this is just a, a group of songs that, that, by the way, really cool songs. Um, uh, those are the first couple singles. I was, I was also confused by that. The cover said bird watching and, and I was like, okay, is it the bird watching EP or is it Lord have Mercer, which is a great song by the way. So I, it gets, the more you listen to it, the more that hook just gets in your head. It's like, boom, boom, boom. Um, oh, yeah. so anyway, uh, anything, anything else to add about this, like new music, streaming paradigm what you guys got going on obviously what do you have the exact date in september yes september 20th um it'll be released everywhere um it's 12 tracks so we've got four or five yeah four singles out so eight more tracks coming in hot and it's called bird watching it's called bird watching it's called bird watching (laughs) okay oh man you guys are like you guys are like, gosh, dang it! Like, no, it's no, Spotify. It's, that's <laughs> the crazy the thing, thing is it's not you, and it's it's almost it's kind of funny because it's it's something to talk about and that sort of helplessness where we're like, we hope that it all makes sense when it comes out, but kind of right. those things that you don't have the control over, and then it's out there, so now it's out of your hands, and you kind of have to. Mm-hmm. What's the what's the cover? Yeah. Is the cover art released already, or is that still? That's that Lord Have Mercer art. The the art that's actually on it, that's the cover. That's the cover. Okay, so yeah. you've got the right artwork, and so you can continue pushing that. It'll just change from EP to album, basically. We're, we're hoping. And it's we'll called find out. Bird Watching. <laughs> or else we're going to have an eight-song album somehow, and then a great four-song EP. Either way. What? Oh, my God. Coming. No, you should be able to you, you should be able to have that grouping of the album. It's uh, you, I think I think it'll work itself out. That's what we understand. But, you know, it, it changes so constantly. Yeah, it, it's such a weird time to be in music, especially with streaming being king like it is. It's like you just kind of hope that everything works out the way it's supposed to, because it's mm-hmm. usually a bunch of algorithms putting it all together. And it's there's something that's kind of lost from the going to hot topic, putting on the headphones and picking out a CD physically. Um, but you know, it's where we are. So yeah, not much you can do about it. Is side one dummy putting out the record? Yes. So let's get them on the phone and be like, Hey, figure out this, make sure the album gets put out correctly. <laughs> like, <laughs> hands on deck. Say, Mike, Mike Herrera says you better fix this dude. <laughs> Yeah, no, we we definitely we got the we got our eye on that for sure because good, <clears throat> yeah, I, that that needs to go right. Yeah, I, I think I think the the album artwork being out there is fine. It's just as long as the all the songs are on there, you're good. And then then that does that bird watching artwork change to like maybe a the EP part thing? Maybe you can change the color of that artwork so it's like people know that's like um the single version of the album, <laughs> something like that. I don't know. I'm just, I'm saying, I'm curious to think in the future, once the album's out, have, you know, you want people to click on that album. Right. And right. you don't want to have will the, EP the same just album. Will go away right? or will it still be there? We don't. It might don't go away. I mean, you know, who knows, right? Like. We're told it'll be okay. Um, you know. Sometimes and you just so. gotta trust it. You, just gotta you can trust, but verify absolutely trust but cover your butt yes absolutely (laughs) check follow up verify and you know trust doesn't mean a lack of accountability exactly exactly (laughs) right 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 good okay i'm glad we cleared this up i feel much better about it i think i don't think it's a real issue as far as as far as like when the album's out it's just weird right now like people are thinking that this is the album maybe but it says ep so they get it um it is weird yeah you got to make some sort of video about it in a fun way yeah you know to be like okay so we have this (laughs) but now we have this and spotify did you know or whatever i don't know you guys do That's TikTok? That's a bad idea. You do honestly. TikTok right there, absolutely. It's a TikTok. It might, it might not be for for all platforms, but silly stuff. It, it does well on TikTok, I think. Anyway, I think it's the best way to address that kind of shit too, because I think you know the that kind of the the helplessness of the you know the the risk factors of everything that we do 
kind of dealing with it in that way. I know personally, it's like, <laughs> it just seems like the best way to anyway, kind of just, oops, this is what it is. And yeah, it's okay to laugh at and call it oh. dumb. <laughs> You're going to write some songs about it, I'm sure. Um, so what's this, what's this new record, Birdwatching? What's the theme? Do you have a theme? Is it, what, what are a couple songs? You know, I'm just kind of thinking about like the first song, uh, Lord Have Mercer. Um, is that the first song on the record or is that just the first single? That was the last the last single somehow, but the first song on the EP, and it's the fourth <laughs> song on the album. Fourth song on the album. Okay, what's the first yeah, yeah, yeah. single? What was the first single? <laughs> <laughs> it was uh, Days Gone and uh, Black Lodge Breakfast Burrito, Limited Time Only. Those there you were our go. First two singles. Okay, I listened to all those. Those are co- great. Days Gone, cool video. Um, you got this. Just It just looks different, you know? Um, you guys are in a studio. It, I think you're in a studio. Yeah, just kind of that's our practice space. Is that we really? Managed. It looks yeah, really. It just kind of happened where the guy who owned it had a boat in the room, and we were going to use the room for something <laughs> completely different. And we got there, and we're like, "All right, we're on a boat. It's just we're on a boat now. We're on a boat. We're 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 sailing to Europe to go play shows. Yeah, you know, whatever. We're we're on our way. You know. <laughs> yeah, Brianna <laughs> yeah. just she just looks so good and you know with her hair all like color the colors pop like, everything just pops about that video and the production value i just immediately was like this is actually like this looks like they went to some rap studio or something <laughs> <laughs> anyway uh you just gotta you gotta go with what you got because so many of the mxpx videos we do you'd be surprised how little money we spent doing it, at least on the location and the look and the production of it. You know, we might spend money on like the guy that's making the video, but, or the girl, uh, but, but, you know, we're just begging friends that have a space to just like, Hey, can we go use your space? Like we did actually shoot a video in a boat garage. Didn't use the boats, but we used the garage. <laughs> Um, That's how all these happened. Uh, yeah. The other two videos, one of them's just in a mannequin warehouse in Tulsa that we were just like, hey, can we shoot a music video? And the owner was like, yes, that's awesome. Please come show people how weird our warehouse is. And it, it was awesome. And then the bowling alley, our bassist Tyler worked, worked there and was just like, we'll just do it here. So same kind of thing. Just let's just make it happen wherever we can do it. How creepy was the mannequin factory? Super creepy. It was super creepy. <laughs> But I mean, that's that's what made the video for me is that it's it's unsettling, very yeah. uncanny valley at times where you just look down the row and be like, I don't know if that moved. It looked like it moved. I might have been just up here. No ventilation. Structurally, like structurally, that building, there's like holes you have to walk around because that's mm. on the second level. All of those mannequins. And there's like even just structurally, it's kind of like you feel like, OK, I've got to I got to kind of watch my back and everyone's looking at me and oh. That place is, whoo, it is in, exhilarating. It's perfect. It's What's the perfect. song? Uh, black, that's the Black Lodge Breakfast Burrito. Okay, I didn't see the video for that yet. Rad, I'll, okay. I'll send you some links to, to everything. Excellent. Yeah, we'll put it up on the show notes. Um, so we did get a little off track, and it's probably my fault, but I was asking you guys about the themes of of this new album. Yeah. Yeah, Brie, go for it. Oh, I, so when when we first kind of set out to write, like the first time we sat down, we kind of had that discussion. Like, are we, you know, the last the last album, there was a story and there was a there was a thread and there was a point and 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 kind of a journey and in you know in what we were trying to convey. And this time it was kind of that conversation of okay, okay, do we do that again? You know, we kind of tried that out. Do we want to do something different? And um, and this was probably about a year and a half ago, I think, that we had kind of first started down to start writing. And a lot of things have happened, you know, as a group and in and, and our personal lives since then. Um, but we had pretty much always wanted it to be or had talked about it being a little more external. There's a lot of internal dialogue, a lot of, um, you know, introspection kind of on the last album. And that still exists here but it's a little bit more about the interaction. You can do as much work as you want on yourself, but at the end of the day, you have to be a mom, a dad, a coworker, a partner, you know, and there's, there's no amount of, you know, introspection you can do that makes that world better sometimes just, you know, easier for you to navigate it. And um, kind of that, 
that acceptance, you know, that, that nothing becomes utopia because you do so much work on yourself that you are able to just live in a perfect a perfect bubble because that doesn't happen and other people's issues become your issues and relationships are a necessity to life and and ebb and flow entropy all these things and kind of that externalization of the issues we see in ourselves in you know kind of what you do after you begin the work and go and deal with this world that really doesn't give a shit <laughs> you know how much how much therapy you've done absolutely yeah well that's perfectly said that's that's exactly i like it i mean it, it seems like you guys get more real, even just more real. I mean, your lyrics were always real. Like, um, it, it feels like you're there hanging out with you and you're just kind of having a conversation in a, in a musical way. A lot of times, like sometimes venting to your friends, sometimes, you know, really having a, 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 a discussion with somebody you're not happy with, you know, wh whether it's that or this, you know, it's very real to me. Um, and it feels like you're kind of moving forward in, into like even deeper territory, which is cool, which is, I think people, people really need that. They, they, they're, they're looking for that in their music. There's so much out there that's just like fluff, you know, so to get those real lyrics. Can I ask you guys maybe something sensitive last time? I don't think I even knew about it. It may have been in the past shortly, but maybe it was still hadn't happened yet. The, the accident, um, with Tyler, uh, we never talked about that. And, and I don't remember if it was before or after the accident, but that's something you guys went through. Uh, I would love for an update. If that's a sensitive subject, we can lay off of it. But, um, how's that affected the band as well? And what for happened? Sure. And people don't even know what happened. I don't know if you guys are trying not to, to talk about that or what, but no, it's a, it's a thing that, that happened to us that changed, you know, all of our lives. And, um, you know, it, it was, it was after we talked the first time it was, um, mm. about a, a year ago, May. And, um, you know, we're driving to Las Vegas, brand new tour van playing Madden in the backseat, like having the best day ever about to go play punk rock bowling and, you know, see our little exhibit in the punk rock museum. And we were so pumped and, uh, Brie and Gil, our other guitarists were flying out to meet us. And then some random chain link just came through the window, you know, good, good size chain got in Tyler's neck. And, um, you know, we didn't know what it was at first. I thought he was shot because it just, the window just went, and then he was mm -hmm. unconscious for, you know, 15, 20 seconds, um, without anyone else, like really knowing what was going on. Or then we got control of the vehicle. Matt somehow got in between him and the steering wheel, parked car, everybody got out. We were fine. And then we saw that Tyler was, bleeding and he'd had a punctured jugular and a, a lacerated or a, I can't remember what the exact carotid lacerated carotid I think mm -hmm. something something like that but he lost two liters of blood and luckily we you know had some first aid training between us and were able to just go to work and um, stabilize them till the ambulances showed up and then you know uh, he was out of the hospital three days later somehow and you know doctors were coming by the room um, when I was up there with them and they would just they just stop by because they heard about it and they were like, What what are you talking about? Like this is this is impossible. People don't survive that on an operating table, like in a you know, a hospital, not let alone a van at eighty or whatever. And so it really was a, a miracle. And Tyler was back on tour with us, you know, a month later when we our next tour. He got back in the driver's seat and was like, Let's try this again, you know. Oh my God. <laughs> Yeah, how and, much anxiety does he have getting back in the driver's seat in the van? Like, he's good? I, I think it's compartmentalized where mm. the the there's something about him reclaiming his power every time he drives the van. You got to so do it. You got to do yeah, it. Yeah, I, I got this. Right. You know, we all, it affected all of us, obviously. I yeah. mean, there's a good little bit where you're like, well, this was good. This was a good life. Uh We'll see you. See you later, you know. <laughs> and we, we went to therapy all together as a group um, and really talked about it. And, you know, there's still moments where we're driving and uh, the van swerves twice and everybody's like in the back seat, you know, freaking yeah. out a little bit. And um, but, you know, the one time we almost did die since then, like this truck swerved into us on a bridge and we all just started laughing. So, I mean, it's like there's a little bit of trauma in there, but that's what we do. We, we kind of laugh about it together as a community, as a, as a 
group as a family and, and say, okay, well, you know, this is special and this is dangerous what we do that, you know, you don't even think about. You don't even think about how all these touring bands put their lives on the line every time they go on tour because we weren't doing anything. We were just driving and it was just literally a piece of metal. No one knows where it came from. Nobody knows what happened. Just everyone's like, well, you know, what are the chances? And we're like, hi. That's, pretty high yeah that's <laughs> and then they go have, have you seen final destination man that's some final destination stuff i'm like you realize like everybody dies at the end of final destination that's the <laughs> point. like death catches them and tortures them like what are you saying to me yeah <laughs> like, exactly in elevators like what's going on don't so, go anywhere but i mean yeah. watch your back joey <laughs> yeah i know right I, I do all the time it's called anxiety <laughs> I'm always, it's so always group right. group therapy uh i don't want to dwell on it but like that's an interesting thing because you have to, that must have brought the band together in, in a way that, only, you know, war and, you know, near death experiences only really do. Right. Uh, so how has that sort of been, you know, group therapy it was, do you feel like everybody embraced it almost equally as equally as they could pers- interpersonality wise, obviously not as every- equally as they could. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think especially because there were different realms of trauma there. You know, you, there Tyler obviously like at the center of it. This is, you know, based around Tyler's. You know, got the closest, I guess, or however you want to. If there's a chart for these things, and it all kinds of goes out from there. You know, there's the, the guys who thought they were going to die in the car, and then thought they were going to watch him die, and then. You know, there's me and our manager who get the call and are rushing to the hospital to meet them there. And they're still covered in blood and having to kind of put it together. There's, you know, and then there's Tyler's family. And there's, you know, there's just there. there's so many people who were so affected by it. And I think that it's it's crazy when that happens because you're the support system for each other and you're all going through it. And so I think we all dealt with our portion the best we could i also think that we were there for each other as much as we possibly could with our own you know portion and um but it's it's like you said that that trauma bond man those don't break easy yeah for sure and i i think it it has changed um it's changed all of us everyone it touched everyone who had to go through that everyone who thought they were losing themselves their own lives or you know one of their best friends lives like it it was um, and it's been a waterfall of, of, of sort of coping and healing from then and checking in as much as we can with each other. Um, and I think that, and that's kind of where bird watching comes from. It's just, um, one of the, Matt, who was the one who, who crawled on top of Tyler, you know, thought he was dead and, and crawled on top of him, got control of the gas pedal, pulled him over, um, he he got into bird watching first and it was kind of like we would do group therapy or we would end up at each other's houses and whatever and and matt had kind of just started spending a lot of time in his backyard just and investing in bird feeders and 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 these things and 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 you know whatever and then next thing i know joey is into it and the two of them are, are, are comparing notes and going on these walks and 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 building up their backyards for birds and and cataloging and it, it from from my perspective it was just kind of watching them find ways to cope you know and and it's such a healthy thing and yeah we were you know doing the group therapy as much as our schedules allowed but when you watch the people close to you kind of fi- finding healthy ways to heal themselves and to to cope and to deal with these things it's really i don't know it was it was really beautiful you know even from from the outside watch you know looking in <clears throat> that's the yeah, crux it was, it was such an important thing that just to slow down and sit and you know this is this is the first i've been through some trap Bree and i you know some of us have ridden the trauma train more than others and in the band and so like we've you know been through things and and, and dealt with them and so it was a, it was different but this is the first one i did without drinking because i quit drinking three years ago a little over three years ago and so it was cool to find something completely different that was completely unlike anything I'd ever done to cope with something like this before, which was just sitting and just being quiet and just seeing that the world goes on outside of my head. Mm -hmm. The world exists and, and, and everything is, 
is going to be okay. Like things keep going, you know, whether you want them to or not, the world continues. And um, I think there's a lot of peace to be found there of just being like, oh, I like birds too, you know? Because that's what it is. <laughs> it works it's, out. it's finding peace. It's recognizing peace in something. And maybe something that's not productive. Bird watching is not productive. You're not going to turn it into a side hustle. You're not going to, you know, I, I don't know, just these. Maybe. Just maybe. nature, you know? <laughs> but it's not, it's not a pressured thing it's not it's not a productive thing it's not a lucrative thing it's just something that happened when after something bad happened and it helped and there's a lot about that even in the like there's a song in the in the album called uh, midnight mass i know it's joey's favorite song it's a big favorite amongst the band too and it's it's kind of talking about um, being honest about the the parts of sobriety no one really wants to hear about. Like you want to hear the triumph and you want to hear the benchmarks. But in that in that way, you know, it, it, like with that one, Joey kind of gets into missing the parts before sobriety, that the things that you lose with sobriety and being able to be honest with that and and these unhealthy ways of coping versus these healthy coping mechanisms. And 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 so I don't know I like in my mind I I see it all as very very connected to that that idea of of of, of what what coping looks like and what peace actually looks like in in an adult life you know post brush with death post trauma what what peace actually looks like past this sort of maybe childhood idealized idea of peace or even you know when you're in the throes of 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 that trauma sometimes. You, you can't really look past surviving the next day. And so this is, this is kind of beyond that. What is, what is your daily peace look like? I love, I, I love that you, you guys just found something so random yet. So universally known, like everybody knows about bird watching, but they don't do it. You know, <laughs> like they don't do it. So you guys are doing it. It's like a, it's like, it's like the oldest form of meditation, um, just some, just like going and sitting next to a bubbling brook, right? Like no, nature is healing. And um, yeah. whether or not you, you think birds are real, because there's people out there that think birds are robots, all of them, every single bird. I don't think that. Uh, I don't like birds in particular because they're just weird. They're beady little eyes. But... I could to I could totally see myself wanting to watch them. I mean, you don't I have don't to like, like something. Close. Yeah, you don't have to I like it to watch it. Me, but I like to watch <laughs> yes. it. I've been attacked by a magpie or two in Texas. I mean, they're they're relentless down there. But uh, I can't. I think birds are disgusting. <laughs> I think birds are scary. Magpies are literally like like one of my number one like irrational fears but not irrational because they are scary and they will attack you i just i i'm mm -hmm. not i i have no interest in interacting with birds but i will say going on tour with bird watchers will make you like there was a day we were walking to the van and i was like hey joey what is that and he was like i don't know let's look it up and he it got great. me <laughs> <laughs> and so we found out it was like a peach face African lovebird. And I kind yeah. of I thought about that all day. And I learned that they're from Africa, but there are rogue groups in Louisiana and Texas for no reason. And no one knows why. And it just it's those funny moments that it's like, I, I get it. I totally get it. And it's amazing. OK. In Arizona. They're, me, they're in Arizona the, the, only. And see, no one knows why. I love learning new cool stuff. But. What is it with the bird, birds? The bird nerd in me was like, wait a second. I got you. Uh, I'm not cool. Let me ask Fine. you, what What do you guys think is up with um, birds suspended in the air, like in the cities you see videos? Is that fake? Is that is that an optical illusion? Is it, do you know about this? Do you know, like, there's I video. I saw it with a plane the other day. Yeah, there's a like plane. A, a yeah. little plane that just was like, me and my son watched it for like six, seven minutes. It just was not moving. I was like, planes, I don't think, I don't know enough about aeronautics, I but I don't think planes can do that. I think it's an optical illusion when it's a plane because it's so far up. up. It's a low plane. Well, plane, still like, kind of, <laughs> I don't know. Real low? See, it was, I, I might be skewed because to, every time I, I say, oh, look at this bird suspended in the air, like somebody like our guitar player, Thomas Nesky, will say like, 
Apple phones aren't listening to you. Oh, that's just a myth. I'm like, no, they're listening to you. So I can't believe anything he tells me. And he would tell me that, no, it's an optical illusion. That plane in the air is not suspended. And I'm like halfway reasonable and halfway completely out of my mind crazy. So it's just, it depends on which one wins <laughs> during, you know, at the time of day. But it's like the alien thing, you know, you, you write something off and then boom, birds aren't real. Right. And that's, and that's on the front of the newspaper and we're all going to have to accept it. So I'm, 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 I'm ready to accept some, <laughs> some irregular, like, facts about birds and maybe you know some supernatural elements there i'm, I'm willing to accept it i don't look for it because i just they're they they terrify me so i 100 percent believe that like i could be talked into birds being able to suspend themselves if for nothing else other than to just get us to look at them long enough to attack, attack. us yeah <laughs> well i don't know the i i agree with you and i don't know what the thing is called but it's like a confirmation bias type thing where once you once you start once you find out about something for one um and then even more so once you keep talking about it you're going to start seeing it online you're going to start seeing it in your life like okay there's red trucks everywhere you start saying that to yourself you're going to start seeing red trucks but i think a lot of it is it's what you're paying attention to it's what you're mm -hmm. looking for maybe it's subconscious but that's a Vader Meinhof phenomenon. So you, yeah, it, what is that? Vader Meinhof. It's it's the it's that phenomenon of of you know you 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 buy a red truck and suddenly you see them everywhere or you learn this fact mm -hmm. and oh I, I just learned about this I get to have this conversation now you know the next day yep. it's it's called yeah it's Vader Meinhof and that's and a lot of people use it for simulation theory. Mm -hmm. like to to try to push simulation theory that if you know and manifestation and things like that where if you think hard enough you attract it or you know here's so here's two examples of that from my life and this is has to do with music song uh we have a song called secret weapon and when that came out i thought okay this is a thing that obviously people say secret weapon now and again but after i start after that song came out I would be watching NFL football or something and, and the all the announcers every week, not just one game, every week started saying, oh, he's got these secret weapons and, da -da, you know, like everybody's using that term. And then it happened again with Let's Ride. Let's Ride happened and Russell Wilson takes it and starts going, Broncos country, let's ride. And, and like everybody's saying like, let's ride. I mean, obviously that's a very basic thing to say as well. It's like a let's go, a let's ride. So... Maybe that's what it is, but I think it's it's me thinking that the world revolves around me when I have a song idea, <laughs> and then everybody else has the same idea. I'm like, wait, what's going on here? Like, are they tapping into my phone? So probably they might be. You never know, man. <laughs> they, they might be okay. Yeah. So now the bird watching, bird watching. Dude. You know, with your album coming out, you're going to start seeing that in more places than you've ever seen it before, and you're going to be like, wait a minute, that's our thing. How is this? I hope so. Yeah. We already did. We need to we... do more for the National Audubon Society. We need to protect these birds. <laughs> Climate change is wiping out species, dog. We need to do something. But also, Joey, do you remember? It was like a week after the album art was done. We we left on tour. And like the first day of tour, um, we went into, I went into like a, a game secondhand bookstore. And I found a journal that said bird watching the same blue with like the almost exact same bird that we had almost picked. It, it's on the interior now, but like even that where it was like, we saw things that looked like our design within weeks of that happening. And like you said, it's kind of the same thing where it's like, I don't, I don't know if this is happening <laughs> because we put it out there or if we're on just the same wavelength as a bunch of other people who thought of the same thing, you know, or I, no idea, but it makes it feels weird, and I like to think of it as like a, a more of a, a confirming, affirming experience, you know, mm -hmm. where it's like, well, they thought that looked good, so I know I I'm at least on the right track that it's attractive or whatever. I try to same with deja vu. I try to think of it like, okay, that means I'm in the same place, of, you know, at the right place at the right time, or like yeah. an affirming, affirming thought, so the dread doesn't take over. 
Well, I've heard that's that's Cliff Diver right there. There you in, go. In a nutshell, <laughs> hey, let's bring, turn this into a, an affirming an thought affirming. so the dread doesn't crush our souls. That's affirming. that's all I need to know about the new album, right there. Nice, I love it. <laughs> well, people say um, people say that nobody was talking about simulation theory until after the Matrix came out, which I gotta admit, I didn't know anything about simulations or anything like that until that movie, but. <clears throat> Yeah, you never know because art imitates life, life imitates art, and it becomes this sort of ball of you don't know what came first, the chicken or the egg. You can get deep enough on Reddit and some of those simulation theories where you're like, listen, I'm I'm a man of science, but that's that makes a lot of sense to me right there, how you just phrased that. Right. So I mean I, I, I get it. I have not been down that rabbit hole. Um, it's dark. Now and again, it's dark. I'll, I'll, I look on Reddit to figure out how to see all of my gig, you know, see how many many uh, file gigs I have on a folder on my Mac. Like <laughs> I'll go onto Reddit or or YouTube. Like so dumb. I'm just like, why can't I? Why don't I just know this? Anyway, it's a great how to <laughs> site, but it's it's also a great way to lose sleep. A hundred percent. So okay. Uh, we could go a lot of places, but I don't want to take up all day. I know you guys are you got got things to do. Um, bird watching. I'm excited to hear all the rest of the songs. I love the theme so much more now that we talked about it. You know, now that we talked about where it came from, and it's from a deep place. It really is. So uh, I'm looking forward to these songs and hearing the rest of it. Um, I think there's a song, uh, track ten, Bible Billy's Bible bon- Baby Billy's Bible Bonkers, which I think you might <laughs> okay. in particularly enjoy. All right, I'll check it. A- about Bree and I's evangelical childhoods and how that affected our lives. So <laughs> I think you, you might be able to have some appreciation. <laughs> nice. Well, I wanted to ask actually, like about influences, about um, not just music, but where you grew up, um, maybe movies, things like that. At the end of the, like, after we do this, let's do a top five. Top five foods or top five movies you can choose. Um, maybe we get one one from each of you. But um, off the top of your heads. But before we get to that, influences. What are some of your, your favorite, favorite music growing up? How did you get into it? I know we talked about the origin story a little bit on the first episode, but I don't remember the influences bit. Yeah, um, I I was straight up Bible Belt alternative kid. So I started going to shows when I was like 10, telling my parents, you know, oh, they're a Christian band because <laughs> there was only one venue in town and it was a church coffee shop. And yeah, no, further scenes forever. They're a Christian band. I'm, I'm going to go see them and, you know, like whatever it was. And so I, I've i been going to shows just most of my life. Um before I started making alternative music, I sort of dabbled as like a, a hug girl. I sang for some bands here and there, but um, my my musical journey was it, it definitely started with alternative music. I think uh, "Clarity" by Jimmy Eat World was like the beginning of that kind of like like oh I like this music what you know and then finding out what I was allowed to listen to at home and then. That led to, you know, MXPX, Slick Shoes, um, a lot of a lot of the old side one dummy bands too. And uh and so yeah, that I I just and it never stopped. Where did you guys cause when I listen to some not every single song, you guys have a, a little bit of a a little bit of a vari- variety in, in some of your songs, but some of the ska leaning songs, to me, like I listen to that, I'm like, yeah, this is like it's not less than Jake, but it fits nicely with less than Jake. So uh, th- thinking back to when you guys were touring with them, I'm like, okay, I could totally see see that working so well on that tour. Um, but the horns, you guys have not just ska horns, you have almost like rock and roll 80s parts as well. 80s parts? That's n- Yeah. No, no, that's right. I don't know if that makes that's sense. That's how we describe but, it too. Yeah. No. Lost Boys Sax. Lost Boys, like, yes. Like yeah. Paul, Paul Simon Sax. Yes, we, we have. That's, that's right. We, like. we talked about this on the last time. I remember we talked about the Lost Boys 80s Sax, and that still just has has a lot of, 
of warm feelings for me when I think about that aspect of your band. When I, when I hear that sax, it makes me smile. So same us too. And and that's and that's kind of like the fun part of it is is flexing that because you you know you you'd think like ska the ska application is obvious, but there's so much more. And I think I think exploring mm-hmm. that's always a lot of fun. And a lot of us came up as ska kids, um, Matt and. Donnie were both in The Last Slice, and they toured. They were probably the best ska band to come out of Tulsa, in my opinion. Um, and so with with that history there, I feel like it's always going to pop up. But especially with this album, I think we, and just in general, I think this album is us kind of at our bravest and at our most, like, exploratory. Because we, we didn't go in there with a whole lot written, like, with the last album. This was a little bit more on the spot and working with Brett to kind of create this this moment, like you said, that honesty that comes from us really, that it was really honest and really collaborative. We spent 14 hour days for a month doing all of this together. And a lot of it was written in the studio. And a big part of that was getting to play with the horns and kind of doing something different, you know, and, and trying different, different flexes for him. <laughs> That's Absolutely. great. You guys are taking it seriously. It's cool. So, uh, where did you guys record? Uh, Barbershop uh, Studios. Is that New Jersey? New Jersey. New, yeah, ha- Lake ho- ho- Hopakong, New Jersey. Nice. It's a real, real cool studio. Brett, Brett's brilliant. Um, he really shaped kind of our our technique when it comes to songwriting in a new way, and gave us a lot more confidence in just saying. You know, because we're like, ah, we don't have everything we need. You know, we've been trying. We've been trying to just force it so we'd be ready. And mm-hmm. and we have all these little parts. And he's like, I don't know why you're worried. Like, you guys can write songs. That's why you're here with me is because you guys can write songs. So, like, let that go. And let's just let's just do the work. Let's just now do the thing that we know how to do. And so it was it was this real, you know, transformative process of of going from, like, just being ruled by this fear of I'm not good enough. The rest of the band's going to see eventually I'm not good enough. And I think all seven of us went through that at a different point in the studio of just being like, there are, you know, I can't keep up. I'm not going to be able to do this. And then it was just like this real piece that, that Brett really brought to us of being like, are you afraid of this? And us being like, no, we're not, af- I'm not afraid. This doesn't scare me. And I'm going, okay, then we can figure it out. And it was just that kind of reassurance that really let us be able to be a little bit more, um, I, I don't know. Honest, just completely. Yeah. Tra- just this is who we are. This is the songs we're writing right now. Where we are in time, and not trying to be anybody or, you know, we'd be like, well, is this song pop punk enough? Is this song emo enough? And Brett goes, I don't care. I don't care if you're trying to write an emo record or a pop punk record. Those words mean nothing to me. Is the song good? Is it good? Does it make you feel something? You know, that's what we're working on. Who cares what the genre? barriers are just write songs that make you happy and so that's why i think all 12 songs are almost entirely different because we just went okay let's just write some songs and yeah I'm, I'm pretty proud of what we ended up coming up with excellent what's brett brett's last name <laughs> uh brett roms roms cool i just yeah he's he's done a Dude. lot of the the more modern emo like um hot mulligan and um uh, free throw and a, a bunch of guys in that yeah. genre that vein yeah as a producer you know there's different types but sometimes you know you got to put that psychology hat on and really get into the musicians and the artist head and uh tinker around in there and make sure that they're not you know sabotaging themselves right so, there were some uh, therapy sessions in the that's booth. Good. That's good. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Where you'd be like, are you crying? And I'd be like, I'm not I'm not, not crying. I just think I should be able to sing this part, and I can't sing this part, and I don't know why. And he'd be like, no, don't cry. It's okay. Sometimes you We're so lucky he didn't charge us extra for yeah, the yeah. guru, camp counselor, therapist, like bestie sesh. You know, like, I, we're so glad we didn't get an itemized list for any of that because he definitely was wearing a, a cheerleader uniform the entire time. Like, he <laughs> way too we, much heavy lifting in that department. We got probably. some good mantras from him. Right. <laughs> good. I mean, the, what was it? Recording is fun and easy. That's what we'd say every day when we got stressed. It's yeah. All right. Yeah. Recording is fun and easy. And we go, yeah, yeah. Now we do that all the time. It Tour, is. fun and easy. It's so fun. Yeah. It's so easy. <laughs> I love that. Well, you, I mean, 
tours do this, but also making records, making records, being in the studio. It's an experience you have with your band and you have with yourself, of course. And those experiences really, they, they carry on through your life. So having a good experience is important, is really important to the future of your recording career and your music career. And, um, it's like anything in life, right? You gotta almost more so in the studio. I think, especially as a singer, you guys are both singers. You gotta pamper yourself a little bit. Bring in a, bring in a, you know, some tissues and and your extra water and your tea and your like all the things, right? A lot of times I'll, I'll be like, ah, I don't need all that stuff. But like when you have it, you're glad you have it, and it makes the whole experience go smoother because it's an instrument. This this natural instrument, your voice and some days it doesn't sound as good or as open tonally as others. And that's just the truth. I mean, there's just no way around that. So having the right person that's going to, it's, it's like we, what we talked about. You don't watch a horror movie before you go like try to be funny or whatever. Uh, same thing with singing and the, re, you know, recording studio, you mentally got to prepare for that. Um, and having a producer help you do that is, is half the battle for sure. I love it. Absolutely. We did watch a lot of horror movies in the studio, though. That's okay, too. That's, a, that's okay. It's okay in the studio, I think. Adrenaline. It would be on the monitor, and then we'd be watching some messed up 80s horror movie, and then, like, be singing these, like, happy, you know, so it was pretty surreal. Yeah, I love it. Well, hey, I think it's time for top five. Um, whoever maybe has the idea can go first. You want food or movies? Or do you want to do both? Let's do both. I mean, okay. you can do one. Uh, what do you What do you think? No, I mean, Bree, which Which one do you want? Do you want food or movies? Oh. I'll do movies. Okay. 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 So my top five movies. I'm gonna say Drop Dead Fred, and number five. I love that movie more than anything in the. I probably. <laughs> I've probably seen it more times than any other movie. I love that movie. That's so funny. Um, and it's a, it's about a you know a girl in her thirties mm-hmm. who gets an imaginary friend, and he's amazing and teaches her how to get past shit. And that whoa, that's me. Um, so I love Drop Dead Fred. I'm gonna say say anything with John Cusack because I'm a girl and I'm a sucker and John Hughes and it's perfect. Yes, literally a perfect movie. Um, I always really love like the movie that like me and my friends when we go to a party and we're gonna s- scream every word at the screen, go to the screenings. It's Boondock Saints. That's like a movie I could write the script for, and it's gory and hilarious and messed up, and that makes me laugh. Um, and then what am I on? You're on three. That's three. Okay. Okay. So number four, um, I'm gonna say that thing you do. Okay. Um, That's good. By Tom Hanks. That is an amazing movie. I always <laughs> dreamed about being in a band like that. That was kind of like my. I think people watch Almost Famous and they're like, that's the movie that made me want to be in a band. And that thing you do was that for me because I was like, and I'm never going to have a drunk as my whatever. And I'm like, it was like a <laughs> cautionary tale. Because even as a kid, I'd watch that movie and be like, that guy has such an ego. This is never going to last. And it doesn't, of course. So. Love that one. And then... Um, Your fave. I'm going to say my favorite movie is probably Beaches with Bette Midler. I love her. It's a perfect soundtrack. It'll make the most cold, unfeeling person a puddle. And I, growing up, my mom always liked to call me Cece. Um, <laughs> which was Bette Miller's character, and it like it's just always been a really important movie to me. So. I haven't so, seen it. I have never seen oh. Beaches. Of all these movies, I've seen them all Good except one. Beaches. But I love oh, Bette Midler, and I love The Wind Beneath My Wings. I sang it in choir when I was in junior high. Okay, you have to watch it and let me know. Like it. Oh, oh my gosh! Especially if you love Bette Midler, it's the funniest saddest movie you've ever seen I, you'll love it you're gonna love it is it is it as sad as marley and me it's sadder in my opinion oh, it's god. Sadder. Oh, god what are you doing I'm, to me 
<laughs> I'm going to straight up say the, the burn is way longer. Oh. The death is way sadder. Like the, the, the sads are way, so much sadder in that movie. And I think the highs are so much higher and it's so much funnier and there's so much light in it and so much love in it and so much loss. And I think you're going to love it. I think you'll feel it on a molecular level. These are all like nineties and eighties. Uh, is it is beaches nineties or eighties? Eighties. Eighties. Yeah. Wow. My I mean, mom raised me watching her favorite movie. So it was like, a, yeah. you're going to like star Wars. You're going to watch drop dead Fred. You're going to love this. And she was right. I, I think the '90s had the best movies. Period. I mean, just agreed. Oh my god, there's just so many. It's insane. All right, food. He's currently trying to eat whatever food is left on this table in front of him. Charlie. <laughs> hey, Charlie. He kept um, crying in his in his crate, and I was like, "Brother, please, I love you. You need a nap." Food's a little uh, easier because we only really eat a few things, right? <laughs> easy, but I'll be specific with it. Okay, I like so, that. So, Philly cheesesteak. Probably number one, love of Philly. In Tulsa, we have this awesome place called Steak Stuffers that's lights out, super good steak. Um, and we like um, Ishka Bibbles too in Philadelphia. That's a really good Philly cheesesteak. Cheese and Del Sandro's, also nice. very good. Uh, sushi would probably be my second favorite. You know, I'm a Philadelphia roll. As a guy who is a Dallas Cowboys sports fan, I like a lot of things from Philadelphia. Hmm. It's just, you know, <laughs> there's a little bit of a disconnect somewhere along the way. But uh, Philly roll, you know, a nice, fancy, weird fried roll every once in a while. That's all right with me, hmm. too. Do you I like, like, do you like uh, soft shell crab rolls? I do, yeah. Yeah, those are pretty good. They're weird. They're, they're weird. They're the weird. first time I had, like, a real soft shell crab, it was a weird experience. I felt guilt um in the process i was like uh, i'm sorry dude I'm, my bad he's like um, it's okay and he's like whatever man i'm already dead so like, i was I don't born care. for this dude i was born for this let's go that's, that's what i thought evolution i'm sorry to interrupt but that's literally was my whole thinking as a child when i was eating things is is that like the cereal was like simultaneously like no 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 but also yeah 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 let's go let's get eaten is that weird? That sausage party. No, movie. that's, that's the, whole, a whole, the whole movie. Oh, is it? No, I haven't a, seen Sausage Party. There's a whole. Like <laughs> there's a thing for kids called Gude Tama, and it's a character about an egg, and he just he try, he puts himself in situations to get eaten because he's like, please God, just someone eat me, and I I think that's beautiful. I love that, and and I have heard of Gude Tama because I have kids and they they're into it, so I'll, I'll have to ask them for some more info. Um, okay, sorry. So we're we're on, that's four, right? We have uh, that's no, that's two. That's two. Yeah, Philly uh, and sushi. I, I was giving you examples. Yeah, yeah. I would go just straight seafood after that. So I mean, sushi's its own thing, but like okay. seafood pasta or a totally different. lobster bisque or you know a nice piece of redfish. Um, whatever, love it. Love love cooking up salmon. My kid used to hate fish, and then I started cooking it for him with steak seasoning, and all of a sudden he loves fish. Can't get enough fish for some reason. So. Love it. Um, grilled cheese, just straight up. Love grilled cheese. What kind of bread, what kind any, of cheese? I mean, it really, it just depends on how classy I'm feeling. But, like, the best is still probably my Mima's. It's just white bread, butter. She put Miracle Whip in there, which was weird at the time, but really hit. And just American singles, craft singles, you know, just the ooey gooey. Mm-mm. Ooey gooey. Would, <laughs> I think it's because it's always out of love. Like she would make it just because she knew I loved grilled cheese. So she'd just be like, Yo, yeah, here's some grilled cheese. Yeah. And, you know, when I had to live with her in high school when I couldn't live at home anymore, she just, I'd be 18, you know, angry at the world, listening to punk rock. She'd be like, Here's grilled cheese. I'd be like, Thanks, Mom. All right. And then back to my metal core, just screaming in my room to senses fail. But, um, so, how much senses fail do you think has been the background to how many grilled cheeses? Like that's one of the questions I would get to when I get to heaven is how many chicken tenders and grilled cheese while listening to metal four. <clears throat> probably, probably a lot. Yeah. I, <laughs> probably a whole lot of it <laughs> would be that. Uh, <laughs> that would make buddy smile. Uh, I, yeah, I got to meet him at, um, where'd we play four courts and, yeah. um, he was. It was really cool to be able to be like, "Hey, you don't know I me." I grilled cheese to your music all the time. No man, like, cry I all the time. So many grilled cheeses. 
<laughs> used to contemplate my own mortality constantly at 15 while listening to you guys and eating grilled cheese. It was great. Oh, uh, that grilled cheese bringing us together. Uh, the last it. one's kind of hard, but I would say some form of steak. So it could be a steak quesadilla. It could be a steak, steak sandwich. It could be a steak torta, you know. But just a good – it could just be a great big porterhouse, whatever. Mm-hmm. I just – I love a good steak. It's – I – you know, had one last night. It was massive. And I just, you just feel, there's some good about it. It just feels good in your bones. It's the oaky in me probably, but I just, I love a good steak. I'm a sucker. I'm also, a, you know, in my late thirties. So that's, you gotta be part of your personality. Just really locking a good steak. That's right. That's right. Medium I love it. rare, of course. So we got Philly cheese steak, sushi, seafood, grilled cheese, and steak. That is an eclectic yeah. list right there. I'm an odd I guy, like it. dude. I, I I don't know if I, I I like all the things you said. I would eat all the things you said. I wouldn't necessarily put them in my favorites category, but I like it. And the movies right. movies uh, same Brie. I, I I like all those movies. I wouldn't put them in my favorite category, and that's why it's unique, and that's why I love to hear it. Um, really, all really good movies though. Drop Dead Fred. Thank you. Wow. I love that movie so much. That's a good it's movie. My favorite. Yeah, it's a good movie. So who it's a uh, who's it star? It stars Phoebe Cates. It's Rick Mayall or... and Phoebe uh, Phoebe Cates. Rick who? Rick Mayall. Mayall. He's a yeah. He was a British comedian, and then uh, Phoebe Cates, who's just brown eyed princess of the nineties, gorgeous. Oh yeah. The Phoebe board. Cates. Oh, we 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 know Phoebe Cates in my oh, gener- yeah. my generation. Knows. Oh yes, oh yes, yeah. you do. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, Steve, thank. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's good. That's awesome. Well, take care of that Charlie dog. Um, best of luck, and I can't wait to hear Bird Watchers, y'all. Um, September twentieth. Add it to your playlists, everyone. Um, anything else we need Just, to know? Thanks. Thanks for having us back. I mean, it was it was so cool to see you in Atlantic City this year, and you remember us like when we say we grew up on. We said it before, but we grew up on on your music, and like. To be able to just like you greet us as friends was was a surreal moment, and then for you just to be so kind to us and uh, let us come back on here it was it's it's an honor, man. It's an honor. You're you're such a beacon of how it should be, how how a real rock god should be. You're a good man. So thanks for <laughs> thanks for being kind to us. Well, it really, means, it means more than you could know. It means a lot to me as well. You guys are great. Awesome to see you out there on the road. Love to see you, you know just out there doing your thing. Keep it rolling. Don't let the bad times, you know, destroy the good times. I, I love that. So, um, yeah, we'll we'll get it out. This will be out Monday. So, uh, oh heck yeah, I'll uh, I'll send you all the stuff. Oh, well, thank you so much. All right, appreciate it, was, it. It's such a pleasure. Thank you, Mike. Peace out, y'all. Later, man. All right, I want to thank my guest, Brianna Wright and Joey Duffy from Cliff Diver. The new album, Bird Watchers, is coming out September twentieth on Side One Dummy Records. Make sure you check it out. It'll be everywhere. Um, shout out to my boy, Bob McKnight for producing and editing the podcast. Thanks to you all. If you want to call in and leave a voicemail, the number is 360-830-6660. MXPX.com slash shop. We have new merch up right now. It just dropped. You want to get new hoodies. We got these new t-shirts of, of like three different new t-shirt designs. We've got banners. We've got this new crossbody clear bag mxpx.com thanks so much for your support thanks for watching and thanks for listening thanks for and if you're on youtube please hit that subscribe button on that youtube all right we'll keep it rolling peace